Microsoft is finally putting Windows on new Apple devices. Tesla finally admits that their cars are dangerous and Nvidia is finally done with the RTX 30 series. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. First off, Onion. Second off, we're giving away this PC today over on our Twitch channel. Come and join us over there as we draw the winner for that. And the winner of everybody who bought a new M1 or M2 Mac is everyone because now, finally, you're not stuck on Mac OS anymore because Windows is officially partnering with Parallels to bring Windows 11 support over to the M1 and M2 chips. There have been workarounds in the past to get some form of Windows on the new CPUs by Apple, but it's always been unofficial. And the big deal is here that Microsoft is officially committing to full support to get this done and even showing people how to get it installed on the Mac OS devices. As mentioned previously, there were workarounds. Microsoft's previous official stance on this was to use a cloud PC via Windows 365, but now they are fully supporting the virtualization aspect of this because one of the things that Apple broke when they made their switch from Intel to their own Apple Silicon is the ability to dual boot Windows and Mac on their devices, which is something that a lot of people valued. And especially because it would allow you to get GPU support. If you switched over to Windows, you could use an external GPU dock that has been completely removed with the new Apple Silicon. But the Windows 11 ARM install that's going to be on the M1 and M2 Macs is not going to likely have any sort of GPU support, but this will allow us to get slightly closer, more similar to the way it was back in the day, but no dual booting is happening. Happening. It still has to be run in virtualization, but it's at least a good step forward to allow people to use things the way that they want to. And Microsoft is not stopping there with the announcement also coming out, having nothing to do with Mac, but Windows 11 is getting a new build that makes sure that you don't have to press Control Alt Delete ever again because they're building end task right into the actual taskbar. You just right click on the application that's stuck and then you're going to be able to end task. It's not just close the window. You get the whole feature. Why did this take so long? Like that's actually really incredible. Kyler, are you excited for this? What? You can just right click on things and it'll end the task. Since when? Since soon. On what? Windows. 11? Yeah. Ah. No. Ah. Let me know what you think of all these updates down below in the comments while well, I let you know that another great feature that you should probably be looking for is the ability to store whatever you want, which is where today's video sponsor comes into play, Silverstone and their new SATA D1 and RM51 chassis that can support, again, whatever you need, okay? If you're looking to install some drives, you wanna make sure that you're building out a PC that has all of the support for five and a quarter inch bays, three and a half inch drives. The SATA D1 is gonna be the one to look at based off of their popular SATA H1, the high airflow focus version and the SATA Q1, which was certified by Cybernetics as being the most soundproof PC case on the market. The D1 on this update stands for drives and that's exactly what they're thinking that you'll use it for, all of your storage needs. The SATA D1 as a minimalistic ATX tower can provide all of the support that you need, especially if you want something that can support a ton of hard drives and optical drives, but you don't wanna be stuck in a case from the late 1990s, early 2000s, which tends to be all that you get. Silverstone actually updating these types of cases for the modern era, which you can check out at the link in the video description. But in case you want more than that, they have their RM51 5U rack mount server, which will allow you to fit modern components, eight PCI Express expansion slots, supports 360 mil coolers, also has support for their Air Penetrator 184i Pro fans, which are great for tons of airflow. And it has included handlebars as well as swivel mounts so that you can either put it in as a rack as a 5U server chassis, or you can actually stand it up as a tower and it's customizable to whatever your needs are going to be. So whether you're looking to store a ton of drives, you have a server chassis, Silverstone has some great modern options for you and you can check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. And while Silverstone's updating their product lineups, YouTube is also doing that when it comes to their CEO. The CEO of YouTube is officially stepping down after a nine year run at the top of the company. She's been a part of Google for a very long time. It was her parents garage that they actually started Google out of and she said that she's moving on to a new new chapter focused on her family, health, and personal projects that she is passionate about. The new CEO is gonna be Neil Mohan, who's the chief product officer previously, making sure that all of the technical side of YouTube has been running effectively, and it does look like everything that's gonna be going on here. It's gonna just be a positional change and not necessarily one that's gonna restructure YouTube as you know it. And Hank Green pointing out that he's known Neil for a while, saying that he's the type of person that absorbs information from everywhere he can, but doesn't let it prevent him from 
for making tough calls and sticking by them. He's been at YouTube for almost all of Susan's tenure as the chief product officer, and this is a logical, stable succession plan and definitely points to no big immediate changes, which makes me happy. If Hank Green trusts this guy, I at least have a little bit more faith in that YouTube's, especially after you've looked at every single other social media platform that has tried to make it that their creators are taking care of. YouTube, regardless of their flaws, is by and large the best place for the vast majority of creators. It has its problems. I've been victim to that as well, but it always looks like they are trying. And to hear that there's not major structural changes happening makes me at least trust the fact that we can rely on YouTube for a little while longer as a YouTube channel here. And you could try to rely on Reese because he'd be the person who'd take over UFD tech if I, you know, decide to step down. Hey friends, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Uh, insert standard Brett response here, but I'm Reese. these are the deals, and we've got the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL. This 16 gig kit of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz at CL16 is going for only $54.99. That's a massive $80 and one cent off or 59% off. If you need a kit of RAM to fit in a completely white build, this has you covered. And honestly, a great thing to pair that with would be the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D. This 8 core 16 thread behemoth is currently going for only $323, which is 28% off. This is still one of AMD's best pickups at the moment if you're not planning to switch over to AM5, which let's be honest, you can have to go for DDR5 and a whole new motherboard and okay, it gets messy. But with that, the deals for today are done. You can find the links to them and more in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm handy off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you, Reese. I hope none of those deals are actually dangerous to me because Tesla is finally admitting that their full self-driving beta might actually be dangerous, issuing an NHTSA recall to 362,000 of their Tesla vehicles that have full self-driving beta, which as far as I'm aware is all of them. This applies to all models and model years with the FSD beta being reported by the NHTSA as having several safety issues of traveling or turning through certain intersections during a stale yellow traffic light. The perceived duration of the the vehicle static position at certain intersections with a stop sign, particularly when the intersection is clear of any other road users, adjusting vehicle speed while traveling through certain variable speed zones based on detected speed limit signage and or the vehicle speed offset settings that is adjusted by the driver and negotiating lane change out of certain turn only lanes to continue traveling straight with the NHTSA saying that these are safety issues, having Tesla actually issue a recall with Tesla saying that they're going to deploy an over the air software update at no cost to the customer, which is typically how Tesla has handled this. Elon Musk has expressed his displeasure with the word recall for things that can be issued in a software update, because typically it used to be that you had to take your vehicle into a dealership in order to get recalls fixed, whereas you can just have your car attached to Wi-Fi at home and get them actually updated that way. However, the intriguing thing is that the NHTSA brought this up to Tesla on January 25th. Tesla met with them on February 7th, and it looks like the update is going to go out in the next coming weeks, which raises a few questions. Number one, were these things that Tesla was going to be fixing anyways that were just general flaws or were they not? They were not on the radar of Tesla to update, but they could have done it at any point because now they can actually issue these safety updates. Was this always the plan or is this being forced by the NHTSA to address certain things that Tesla was not going to touch because they didn't view it as a problem, but the government actually said that this is functionally dangerous for people to do. It's hard to say Tesla's doing this voluntarily with it being said that they're doing this out of an abundance of caution. So if you have a Tesla vehicle, you can expect that coming out soon. And if you have an RTX 20 series that you bought from AliExpress, Man, talk about a cover up. It looks like there's more RAM painting that's going on with GPUs. We talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News, how crypto miners were painting over some residue that you could see on the VRAM because they didn't want people to know that they were as heavily used as they had been. But now this is a little bit of a different story with sellers on AliExpress painting over the fact that there are Micron RAM chips in certain RTX graphics cards. This is because early on in the RTX 20 series, some of the Micron chips were actually faulty and causing performance issues. And and NVIDIA eventually switched over to Samsung for their RAM chips. But the AliExpress shippers are likely trying to hide that fact so that you think you have a GPU that's actually going to run at full speed, despite the fact that it might actually have some issues, which is less than truthful. But AMD being truthful because they have committed to their word of bringing FSR 2.2 source code out, and they have finally done that, releasing the source code of FSR 2.2, which will allow more game developers to actually implement this into various video games, 110 video games available and upcoming have FSR2 being implemented. Hopefully this raises the amount. It's a very good piece of software. I like it a lot. I want to see more video games. And if you wanted to see more RTX 30 series, especially the Founders Edition, it's not happening.
happening because in a surprise clearance event, Best Buy put nearly every single one of the RTX 30 series Founders Editions on clearance and got rid of them completely. Huge price drops on all of them. 3090 Ti for $880, 3080 Ti for 720, 3080 for 420, and a 3070 was going for 299 if you can find them in stock anywhere near you. And if you try to go on over to Best Buy's website to pick up one of these Founders Edition cards now, the link is completely gone. They're no longer listed. And especially with Best Buy being the only place where you could get Founders Editions cards for the RTX 30 series, that means that these are completely done. Nvidia not releasing a public announcement of this, but it was to be expected, especially as they're moving forward with rolling out their RTX 40 series. You can still see certain Founders Editions on the website, the 3060 Ti, as well as the 3070 Ti still being there, despite the fact that they are unavailable nearby. It was a rather unceremonious removal of these cards. Let me know. Does this affect you? Were you planning on buying a 30 series Founders Edition of those specs? Were you able to get one of these ones on clearance? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments, but we're getting some more benchmarks coming out of the RTX 40 series mobile graphics cards, and it looks like they are thrashing the RTX 30 series because an RTX 4090 laptop in the Razer Blade 18, a $4,500 laptop with a fully specced RTX 4090 is busting out through the benchmarks. 175 watt TGP compared to the RTX 30 90 Ti's 300 to 400 watt, and it's actually beating it in time spot. You can see the RTX 4090 laptops right here at 22 and a half thousand points, whereas the 3090 Ti could only manage 21,000, even though the fact that the 4090 is slightly below the 4070 Ti, it's about there at full tilt. We've already talked in previous episodes of Hot News about how the 4090 at a given power level might actually be worse than an RTX 4080. So these aren't labeled as they're supposed to be, but it is really impressive to see the fastest mobile GPU beat out the desktop version of the fastest GPU from the previous generation. It's just cool stuff. I like these numbers. They go up. I go away. Hot news is over. Don't forget, we're giving away this PC. If you're watching this past noon Eastern, it's already been given away. But I think we have another giveaway going on. Kyler, do we have another giveaway after this one? We always have another giveaway. Wow. Okay. See you in the next hot news, friends.